I guess we're soon gonna get started. I'm slightly late. Okay. Uh, I hope people can hear me correctly in the chat. If not, just let me know. Okay, cool, thanks. Is it loud enough? Usually it wasn't. Clear. Okay, cool, thanks. Um, Alright, just pinging some people who wanted to attend. to do today is uh, try to play with uh, jump tutorials like we did the two last times so which is a bunch of tutorials for uh, the jump modeling language for mathematical optimization embedded in Julia and these uh, in these in these tutorials uh, what I wanted to add is uh, an example on the max cut problem which is a problem from graphs uh, which is fairly simple to state and the interesting thing is you can formulate a solution approach for this problem uh, using mixed integer linear optimization, uh, which is okay, but fairly weak and fairly inefficient. And another approach is using uh, semi-definite optimization. So uh, linear optimization uh, over matrices, and the additional constraint is that these matrices have to be semi-definite positive. Um, okay. So far, so good. Uh, so, uh, let's get started. Oops, I didn't finish, or did I finish the last time? Yeah, I'm gonna reset this here. Um, docs manifest. Uh, so, jump 021, so this branch here was the one we did last time, so which was basically updating all the tutorials from jump 020 to jump 021. So if I now start the project and check what's going on, uh, I'll be at uh, jump 021, etc. So everything is good. I had also started, uh, uh, no, not that. Good branch. I had also started this uh, indicator tutorial, uh, which we stopped a bit early because I want to see to investigate exactly what was the bug we we're observing on. Um, on indicator constraints and most specifically to on bridged indicator constraints I'm not sure what was what was happening here uh, all right so what we'll do from there is so we'll continue from this branch which is so uh, jump 021 to get branch and let's add a uh, max cut and this one will be less uh, maintenance and less plumbing and more going into the, um, the models, so going into the, the heart of these tutorials So we'll by creating a new one. Check out max cuts. Uh, so I did a bit of reading before starting this tutorial because I'm not an expert in, um, in max cuts or even in combinatorial optimization problems on graph. I know them, but I'm not re doing research or anything on them. Um, so I had to get a bit re-familiar with this. And more specifically, I'm really not an expert on semi-definite or let's say structured convex optimization in general. So I had to recheck some few things. Um, yep. So we're there. Is the screen big enough? Um, it seems okay. On do we need one more? Do we need to resume a bit? Uh, oops, no, no, no. How is it looking? No, it's big enough. Right, so like that. Okay, thank you. Right, 
So max cut. Um, maybe before before starting, um, I, I'll explain a few things on the max cut problem, and um, interrupt me or ask questions if you if you want. So I get I guess I get a graph around here. Do I have? Uh, let's check if uh, Wikipedia has some some nice graph graph theory. Yes. Um. So imagine you have a graph like this, um, but with weights on the edges. Do we see that well? It's not really great. Yeah, like that. So imagine we have a graph like this with weights on the edges, and what we want is um, to find a max cut uh, on on this graph, which means we want to separate the the graph, the vertices of the graph, sorry, in two sets. Um, such that the edges that cross from one set to the other will be maximized. So without weights, we could say it's the it will be a uni uh, let's say uh, unweight yeah sorry an unweighted uh, max cut problem. So here we have a click of three, so the max we can achieve is two. Let's say we separate these two here, so one is separated from uh, five and two. This means these two are together over that. Uh, so this means we could cut it like this, I think. This would be a maximum. So this means uh, the max cut here will be on one side 6, 5, and 2. And on the other side 1, 3, and 4. I think this is correct. Uh, interrupt me if it's not the case. Uh, we said 6, 5, 2. So that's uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. Five. That's five edges uh, crossing the crossing the cut. Five over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I don't think we could do much more. Five sounds like like a good solution. I think this is optimal. Uh, so this is a combinatorial optimization problem in the sense that we decide uh, the a solution is a s is a subset of some binary set uh yeah, of binary set exponent something so um the the values are always zero one it's a discrete set right and so yeah what's interesting is that usually for well for many uh combinatorial optimization problems you have a formulation which is based on uh, semi definite optimization uh sorry on linear op uh, linear integer optimization. So you have a linear relaxation. Uh, you have a yeah. You have a linear relaxation. You on which you branch when you get a fractional solution, and you branch until you get some solution which is in uh, which is integer. It's basically that, roughly speaking, and badly explained. Um, what's the background that you had on the start? Background that I ha I'm not sure what you mean. The background that I had on the start, uh, the background like my Firefox window. Um, so yeah, getting back to this. So what's interesting here is that. Oh, the lake. Oh yeah, it's one of the pictures. Uh, so do I get it here? So the background image is not mine. It's from. Uh, it's from Ubuntu, um, on Ubuntu 18.04, the LTS, and that's one of the stock pictures they have. So, yeah, uh, so going back to this, the, um, the interesting thing here is you, the, the most efficient solution is not to go from combinatorial problem to linear formulation to integer formulation, the most efficient is to go from uh, combinatorial problem to quadratic formulation to semi-definite optimization and solving this and then theoretically either branching on the semi-definite uh, optimization or uh, finding some some approximation scheme. Um, yeah, so what's interesting is you go from combinatorial to nonlinear and then you switch back to to a solution instead of going from combinatorial to linear so that's a, a nice thing here 
uh, I might say some stupid things and a funny uh, funny component on that is I saw a seminar by my research supervisor this week on uh, well the graph and eigenvalues so including uh, this problem so he if he watches this he will see me saying probably many error, uh, erroneous things so that, that will be interesting next week right so um, how do you or how do we formulate this problem so uh, let's just write uh, max cut oops so let's just formulate this problem a bit naively we said we have a graph with um, vertices, vertices and edges okay and what we also have is uh, weights so uh, so the edges will be i j in edges in edge in e so i j will be uh, vertices that are in the s and a pair or a tuple of um, vertices are in the edge okay uh, and the weights will be a uh, weight matrix i j uh, which is sparse and for uh, because this is for i and j in uh, the edges so you only have a weight defined if you yeah you only have a weight defined if uh, the ij is in the edges okay um how are we gonna call the solution uh, we could call it uh, let's call it X so for a linear so we'll go for a linear based um, formulation first which is what I'm mostly familiar with um, and what lots of people are uh, more familiar with so uh, for a linear based formulation I'm gonna also check my notes because this is uh, far from trivial uh, so what we want is um, define the variable xi for each i in the vertices of a graph equal uh, 1 if uh, so what we want in the end is a set s and the complement of a set s bar so that's the, the output of an optimization or of a decision on, uh, on the max cut because we want to separate uh, where is my super graph oh I closed it already um, yeah too bad I closed it yep oh perfect yes that here so what I want is a subset of my um, of my vertices it means I'm gonna my, my decision is gonna be a set s which is which one I put in the let's say the first set and the complement is automatically deduced so here s will be for example 2 5 6 and s bar will be 1 3 4 okay um, so xi equal 1 if uh, xi if i in s uh, 0 otherwise it's just a convention you could completely flip this around and use 0 and 1 so 0 for s and 1 for s bar um, and what we want is uh, maximize the sum of the weights of the edges that cross from s to s bar and since we're considering a non-directed graph this is exactly the same as crossing from s bar to s it's exactly the same edges okay so um this means uh, let's define variables let's say z uh, ij equal uh, 1 if um if xi uh oops if xi different from xj okay um, so this is not a 
this is not a linear formulation, but this is a first naive one. So uh, zij will be defined over the edges for i, j, e. And for this, uh, zij can be 1 only if xi different from xj. And it will even be if and only if. Okay. So, uh, and the objective finally would be maximizing uh, the sum of z i j times uh, w i j. Uh, I hope everyone is following it fine. So this is basically the outline of the problem. So maximizing the sum of z i j times uh, w i j. And zij is 1 if xi is different from xj, so it means i is in s, for example, and then j is in s bar, or the other way around. And if that's the case, then we get 1 here, and we add this weight to, uh, the, to, the, the, weight, uh, to the, the weight considered. So the one crossing the boundary of uh, s, s bar. Okay, so we have the whole objective and problem here formulated let's say naively and uh, now we want a first linear formulation for that yeah um, it's a naive problem statement and this would be here a linear formulation so a linear formulation for this problem will be um, so, yeah, mixed integer or integer linear formulation because we have only linear constraints, but we also have integrality or binary constraints. So, uh, what we want is uh, that sums up pretty well what we want here. So, maximize over the, ver the decision variables, which are x and z, of sum of zij, wij. Uh, subject to, so subject to constraint, yeah, let's try it, subject to, and here we have our constraints. So we said uh, zij can only be 1 if um, i is in the set and j is not, or the other way around. So uh, the first thing will be, uh, so z and x the second type of variable, so it would be say zij in uh, zero one for uh, for i j in e, and then xi in zero one for i in v. Okay. Uh, so that's the decision variables. Oops, we'll let this at the end. And then the, the, the substance, the, the core of the constraints themselves will be, so z i j smaller or equal to. So if x i and x j are both uh, one, it means i and j are both in s and then zij has to be zero and if uh, zij uh, if xij and zij are both uh, zero it's the same thing so it means zij will be smaller than xi plus xj that's the easy one here this is saying so this one is between zero and one uh, this is between zero and one and this is between zero and one so we have these two to zero then this has to be 0. And this 2 to 0 corresponds to um, both i and j being in s bar. So now the other way around, zij is smaller than, so the complement of this, which is 2 minus this and that. So if we have, um, yeah, did I do a mistake? No, it's fine. 
Um, so if we have uh, xi and xj both equal 0, then this is zij small o equal to 2. This is always respected. If we have one of the two being 1 and the other 0, then this is equal to 1. This is always respected also. And if the two are equal to 1, then i and j are both in s. And then this is equal to 0. And then zij has to be 0. So these two constraints enforce the um, enforce that um, zij will only be one if the two are different, and that's it. That's our uh, linear problem. So before going to the um, uh, to the let's say uh, nonlinear quadratic equivalent, which is very hairy. Uh, I guess we can start with uh, writing the tutorial itself, so the document. All right. Oops. Uh, not in the source C. So, for those who were not there before, uh, let's check what's there. No. Uh, okay. We have different uh, documents in Jump Tutorials in the repo here. We have a uh, documentation source which doesn't contain much scripts which is where we put the tutorials so the source for the tutorials are in script and then notebook is the pro uh, produced result when you generate notebooks out of these scripts okay so what i do is i'll copy one of the tutorials so it would be i think in modeling and should be something close to network flows modeling and we'll call it a uh, max cut okay okay so the title will be here um, uh, maximum cut problem uh, linear and uh, semi-definite optimization formulations okay here we'll have uh, oops okay uh, do we want to start with everything here no I I think not so we'll use yeah I guess GLPK is fine for the linear one uh, we'll definitely need linear algebra and we'll also need light graphs which is the let's say the one of the reference graph packages in Julia or the reference these days graph packages in Julia um, so light graph is really uh, fairly easy to use I'd say and to get started with it's battery included and so on but it also allows you to um, define your own graph type and define your own functions fairly easily so it's it's fairly neat and I'm not saying that because I'm helping maintaining some of the things in there totally not a conflict of interest oh and yeah you're right in the chat everybody needs uh, linear algebra all the time basically um, okay so uh, the the uh, maximum cut problem. Problem. Suppose that each arc. Ah, do we want to? No way. Last time I got bogged down by writing the prose, which is fairly long, uh, much longer for me than writing the code. So I'll just skip that for now. Uh, so let's maybe add to do explain problem. Okay, um, and then we'll start with linear integer formulation. Or integer linear formulation. I think people mostly capitalize this. Okay. So uh, we'll assume that we'll have introduced all the notation before. So here, uh, so it would be a max problem, a maximization problem over x and z, as we said before. Some, uh, you, why is, okay, now, uh, so for all 
wij in e wij and uh, zij okay uh, I think we could use sub equation here I'm not sure this will work so I'm not gonna put it for now so maximizing over x and z this objective subject to and then um, so first constraint is uh, yeah just reuse the one from my uh, from my small file which was max cut I think this is almost valid LaTeX yeah that so um, subject to Z this needs curly brackets smaller than this uh, the smaller can be made a bit prettier like that XI XJ okay um, second one will be where is my end uh, second one was this one I try to align things maybe here um so that is just smaller than two minus xi plus xj okay and then uh the binary constraints oh, I just copy that z i j in zero one and xi in zero one fall i in v cool uh, we need to close that and that's it uh, oh yeah we need to also close the latex block here this should work uh, one thing we should we could do is plot the graph to represent um, yes so graph plot so we'll also try to plot the graph because it's uh, it's very nice in the tutorial to see an illustration of what you mean exactly uh, one thing we could do is uh, Given a graph and a uh, given a graph weights and a decision, um, I think we could. Yeah, given a graph weights and a decision, we should make a function that just gives you um, the the objective value, and that can be done without jump, without anything, just computing the objective value. Uh, like we said, uh, do, oh, I closed it. I uh, sorry, I closed the the picture again. I'm gonna try to keep it now. Is this no? Um, yes, this one. Yes, that. So imagine that you're given this graph again and somebody gives you s so the let's say the left hand side set is 6 2 and 5 then what you can do is for all edges so uh, yeah iterate over all edges and check is this edge on the boundary so one side in s the other side in s bar and if that's the case add the weight of this edge to uh, your total score and then you output this total score. So this would be a, a good warmer, I think. And this is also fairly easy because it's starting everything with light graph, no optimization, no linear programming involved, and, and so on. All right. So I just yeah, reduce it here. Uh, so if you have any question, don't hesitate in the meantime.
Yeah, we also need a cool graph. Uh, what would this look like? Uh, so this is not even using the graph. So function compute uh, cut value, and then this will take a graph. It should be a light graph. Dot abstract graph. Oops. Mm. Why are there single quotes following the pound sign in the comments? Ah, uh, yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, I just finished my function signature before I forget it, and then I answer this one. So G, uh, this will also take weights. I just call it W because we we have a mathematical notation just above. Uh, which would be an abstract matrix, for example. Matrix. And this will also take. Um, how do how do we how are we going to model a solution? A solution would be um, left side subset, which would be a col ah. Left subset or just subset? Uh, vertex subset. Okay, and this vertex subset will be um, the um, the ones that belong in let's say the left hand side. So in our example here, I would say my left hand side arbitrarily is two, five, six, and I want to compute um, the max cu the cut value of this. Equivalently, you should just you you should get the same solution by um, giving one for free because this should be symmetric. So this would be a good test to add. Uh, to answer the question, why are there single quotes following the pound sign in the comments? That's a very good question because I didn't introduce it. So uh, this project, uh, Junk Tutorials, is using um, is using Weave. Uh, I hope that's the correct pronunciation. Weave, yeah, weaving something, yeah. Uh, is using Weave, which is uh, a package, a Julia package, which allows you to produce documents out of Julia code. And uh, more specifically, with this, with this here, you can produce. Uh, so I don't need it here because it's just a simple comment. Otherwise, with that, uh, you can produce a specifically formatted code, which uh, or specifically formatted comments, which will just be standard Julia comments if you run the script. But uh, if you pass it to Weave, it will know that it needs to be text that's output, that's that's given as output. So if I have this here, um, and I uh, produce a notebook out of it, so this would be a text block in my notebook, this would be a normal LaTeX block in my notebook, and this would be a code block here. Uh, that That's very neat, it's very practical, and that's how these notebooks are done. Uh, if we check jump tutorials, if we check the jump tutorials here, yeah, you have them. Um, so the result will be something like this. Yes. So this will be uh, the resulting notebook, and if I show you the code, it's something like that. So the corresponding code will be script uh, introduction an introduction to Julia. Here you see title contributed some blocks with some uh, specific paragraphs and so on, and the result is this this notebook here. So yeah, fairly practical. Okay, so that's why uh, long story short for the pound and then the single quote. Okay, so, so far so good. Uh, let's get back to our uh, function here. So we create a function which takes a graph, a uh, weight matrix and a vertex subset. And we want to output uh, the, um, so the, the results will be uh, could we sum yes we'll do a, a single sum maybe 
sum so of w i j for i in uh, vertices so vertices is a function from light graph uh, so vertices of g j in vertices of g um, so by default uh, whenever there is not uh, an edge from i to j then the weight should be zero so that's the case for example from w of i i it will always be zero so for i in vertices g uh, of g j in vertices of g um, if i in uh, vertex subset and j um, you will maybe write it with uh, with parentheses here i vertex subset and not in j vertex subset okay and we just returned the result so I might not even uh, give it a name I return that okay uh, so one thing I could do is uh, use my my toy graph because I, I start to like it this Wikipedia graph so we just uh, create it first I'm trying to look for the best way to create it it might be to manually enter all the all the edges so I'll do that um, that's okay so I create my first toy graph uh, g equal uh, so it will be a simple graph with six vertices and then I will add the edges one by one uh, so so add edge of G so one two one five two three there might be a better solution to do it but because there are some special structures in this graph so maybe we could just create a cycle or create a complete graph of three and then add these but I think it's way more efficient to have all the all the vertices from the beginning bec and then add edges for uh, lots of graph types maybe not simple graph might be something saying something stupid but I think overall it's better so two three uh, three four Four, four, five, and four, six. Um, yes, I'll just copy this and go to here. Oops, no, I definitely need using light graph, and that's the only thing I'm gonna need, I think. Uh, using a graph plot also if we want to look at the graph okay let's create this graph true means here the edge has been added so it means there was no problem if I add an edge for 7 and we don't have 7 vertices this would be false edge 2 5 yes we have an did I oh yeah I definitely forgot it thank you very much I uh, will add it here. Yes, so let's just relaunch everything. Oh no, I could just relaunch this and they will all be false except the two five that I forgot before. False, 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 except this one. Perfect. Uh, then, so we have a graph plot. So I'll just use graph plot dot it's gplot html to get it directly in my browser of g and that's it I don't need to add anything yes perfect and I'll do the same thing with uh, node label equal one 
two, uh, six. And does it look like my uh, Wikipedia graph? Six, four, five, three, five is in the cycle with one and two. Perfect. Yeah, that's it. Okay. So this here is a. Um, so it produces an SVG, which is fairly practical because you have the whole thing vectorized, you can save it as text. So yeah, Graphplot needs a bit of maintenance if somebody wants to uh, um, if somebody wants to commit a bit to it. But yeah, overall Graphplot is really a neat piece of software and going fairly fast. You've seen I haven't waited for anything. It's going it's going pretty well. Loading Graphplot is light and uh, creating my graph in my browser was quite a snap too. Yeah, time to first plot is really an issue for a normal plots, like when you have very dense things, but here we're just producing an SVG, which is very light, so that's why it's, it's going fast. Okay, so we have our graph, and for now we'll say, um, I also use sparse matrices, sparse arrays, so I use sparse arrays because uh, I will want to um, create my uh, weight matrix, which will be a sparse zeros of size uh, six and six. So I'm creating a sparse matrix of only zeros for now, um, and for i j in edges of the graph I will add uh, so w i j will be 1 I'll just have uh, unit weights for now did I close? no ah, yeah, oops I forgot to using sparse arrays Yeah, uh, so I know it wasn't a, grit a criticism of Graphplot, so yeah, that's why Graphplot is restrict a bit restrictive compared to other plotting packages in terms of what you can do, there's a bit less things, but overall it works well because it's fairly light. You see just adding it to a package, loading it and so on is, is really light, yeah. so that's uh, a nice thing. Iterate simple, wait, uh, can I not? Huh. How come? Ah, we haven't. Um, ah, yeah. E equal. And then IJ. We, so we need to convert it specifically to a tuple, I think. Yes. One, two. Okay, all good. Yeah, it, it all seems fine here. So we have uh, the weights that are set, and now, so what I want to do is test that my intuition is correct. So that means if I take what was the subset that I chose again? Yeah, uh, two five six or equivalently one three four. Let's take two five six. Uh, if I use this with uh, two five six as subset this should be um, equal to uh, the number of edges that are crossing, so 1 here, 2, 3, 4, 5. So G, W, and then this would be my subset, and I would just use a tuple, I guess, it's the lightest thing for small values like that. Uh, oops, sorry, 2, 5, 6. Yes, and since we don't have a type, a way in the type to express something that's iterable, it will be too restrictive to say that my subset here has to be a vector, for example, or an abstract set. Because the operation I'm doing on it is just checking uh, if a member is in there or not. And I don't want, so for a very s small cardinalities, it would not, not be worth it to create a set. For larger cardinalities, you might want, um, you might want a vector, but in between a tuple should be fine, so I don't want people to get imposed a uh, type on that. It's just, you know that this has to be a collection on which you can check if an integer belongs or not. 
Another thing that we could use here is a bit set, which will be fairly appropriate for that, I think. And so compute value of this, um, this should be equal to uh, how it? five, I said, yes. And that should be a prox five, not five. Okay. Yeah, I still don't have Unicode on, on micro, this makes me sad, but yeah, for now. Oh, and if we start to do test, we will also need using test. Tests or test, I never know. Just test singular, okay. Um, one thing I might want to do is distinguish my other packages from the linear, from the standard library packages. So I'll just do this like that. Okay. Okay. So um, this is all good. Let's run the test now. Test failed, obviously. 1.0. So I did something that was wrong, it seems. Sum of WIJ for I in vertices, J in vertices if hmm so this means um, so I'll just dig into the function and see what's happening yeah period of life reading I mean given that I'm expecting to go a bit deeper on the semi-definite optimization side I'm really fine with having a small bug on a loop and a sum. This will definitely not be the worst because it's just some bug to find out. While some of it could be um, could be way worse. So some of it might be like I have no idea why this is not working or not converging or anything. I mean, I'm really not a semi-definite wizard. So subset uh, vertex subset equal this, and then. If I do this, 1.0, this is not supposed to happen. Uh, so let's just turn this into a for loop now. So for i inverses, no. Ah. Why doesn't, is it, can I blame, um, no, here. Uh, I'm not sure we, who is to blame here. Is it uh, the oh my ripple or is it just Julia that doesn't let me enter a new line after that? For J in vertices, I think I could even loop on the neighbors of I instead of looping on the vertices themselves. I, it sounds a bit smarter because I know that if I don't have a neighborhood between I and J, then the weight has to be zero. Um, info. Yeah, let's do some uh, info debugging. I so so I just info i and j, and then. show and I show that so at show unlike info will not evaluate the expression it will well it will first show me the expression and then show me the evaluation of this expression so it's fairly convenient for debugging okay so Yeah, yeah. So you're right. For i in vertices, j in vertices also works. It's just I wanted to decompose a bit more, but this is really not necessary. Oh right, I have taken only uh, no my my loop is completely incorrect here. I don't want i in vertex and j not in. I want that or the other way around, and I did not do that here. So what I want is in of i in ver uh, vertex subset is just different from j 
and where it accepts it here because I want one to be true and the other false or the other way around. I just want, I don't want, it's like a XOR logical uh, implication. I, I just don't want the two having the same value. I think that's a valid XOR, yeah. Five, okay, perfect, that's better. Uh, so I can now go back and fix this one here. Let's copy that. And, yep. So if I now rerun the whole thing, I should get... Oh no, I did not correct um, for ij in... Yes, that. No. Um, ij... No, no, for e. Yes, I need this one instead. Here. So, there. Yep. All good. So, if I now rerun the whole thing... Select the good one. Uh, oh, where am I? I here. Mm. So I'm just going to retake the whole thing. And up to the test, which says that this has to be equal to 5. Test passed. Wonderful. We're almost done there. Just kidding. Uh, one thing I wanted to do now that my test is correct is uh, improve this here because for i in vertices then j can just be in the neighbors of j i because we don't need to check all the vertices all the time this would be fairly more efficient so I just redefine the function and then my test huh error in the test Interesting, so I don't have access to to i in this. So I think I need a second for loop. Yes, okay. So interestingly, so for so someone said in the chat, I'm literally gonna take the comments and paste it. Um someone said in the chat for i inverses, j inverses, this works. But the two parts of a loop have to be independent because they, they are looped on at the same time. So if you have this that depends on i, this will not work. Here, for that, you need a second for loop. I wouldn't have done myself. Okay. Uh, so we're good here. So we just test the value uh, to evaluate to evaluate it. We'll add a bit of text around to say this is a toy example, blah, blah, blah. Maybe we'll add the source, say that it's taken from Wikipedia, uh, leave the credits to, yes, here. So, uh, graph taken from, uh, Yeah, curious. Uh, I don't know why. For I so, someone in the chat mentions this works, right? Yes, it does. Um, but yeah, what if you print it in J? One one. Okay, yes. So this works, but I don't know why. in neighbors of J I print print it in J how come this works and it didn't work in the 
in the sun. That's okay. Huh. Okay, so apparently there are some corner cases on this. Thanks, thanks, run string in the chat for the explanation. I had no idea. I still don't. For um, it's it'd be interesting to see what are the corner cases that don't work for this. Okay, so we have a toy example working. Now, uh, what we want to do is create the optimization model uh, for this problem. So we add uh, n equal the number of vertices of a graph and m equal the number of edges of a graph. Okay. Mm. I don't, I'm not even sure we need the number of edges. Uh, what we'll add is, so this will be a linear max cut is a model with JPK optimizer as optimizer. We'll keep this as, uh, as that. The first variable, so this would be that. First variable would be, we said um, Z with I are we indexing over the edges or over? We'll index that over. The uh, yeah, we will index this over the ends. So we'll make a full matrix out of it. Oh, okay, thank you. So the coma doesn't work in comprehensions. Okay, I didn't know. You have a wor the most ignorant uh, streamer you've ever had in this weekend, at least. So we have a first variable z, and then we have a second variable, which will be x. Both will be binaries, and then we'll add the constraint that we said that we talked about before, which will be um, constraint for. So this will be for. This will be so. First thing in to give in the constraint is the model. Oops. Then the second thing to give is the indices of a constraint. And in that case, if I go back here, the first constraint is over i and j in edges. Uh, and such that i j in edges of g. We can do that because edges of g returns an iter a custom iterators and not an array, so it's not very costly to check that i and j is indeed uh, an arc or yeah, an arc from the edges. So that's the indices, and then so z i j has to be smaller than so that was the first constraint uh, x i plus x j. So this is to say if both x i and j are zero, then um, we don't take this edge. And then the second one will be i in uh, one n, j in one n, i j in edges, z i j will be smaller than uh, two, yeah, two minus this. 2 minus uh, the sum of x i and x j. Okay. Uh, we already set the binary constraints, so we just need the objective now. Uh, this would be a maximization problem, and this would be the dot product between. Can we do dot products on matrices? That's a good question. Between uh, w and z. So this will be the first model, let's say. Oops, I didn't. So I'm using jump. I'm using linear algebra. I'm using GLPK, which is an open source uh, solver for linear uh, and mixed integer linear optimization. So now I do have all the things I need. 
can just copy my model. So the nice thing with jump it is it would print all the variables. It would print also the constraints in a mathematical like form. So my constraint for free is th this one and so on. Uh, it does look like a lot of constraint. How do I have these many edges? Oh yes, I do. So the constraints are only there's one line in the constraint for each uh, of the edges and not for each pair i j because we filtered it after this semicolon here. Okay, yeah, no. Um, so in that case, the dot product is uh, what I want because I just want the element-wise product and the sum of that. And yeah, it's exactly what I wanted here. My wa well, my weights are all one, so it's not changing much. Uh, so if now I optimize this, we will finally see if my um, model, w if my solution, the, the graphical solution I picked from looking at the graph was the optimal one. So that's uh, linear max cut. And this is not a big graph, so it should not take too long. Even though, so the, as we said, the linear model for this problem is very inefficient. Uh, so I jump that value. Said. Nope. Broadcasted. Okay, so how do I read this? Uh, I will just do. I get a vector for the solutions, I think. So i j for i in one n j in um, minus one j. I plus one N if gem value of IJ is uh, smaller than zero at five. We know for I ah, again, yes. Again, yet yeah, no, uh, no coma in comprehensions. Got beaten once and twice. So one two uh, one five. So which one did it take? If we get back to our graph, okay, one five. So this is here completely symmetric. Um, no, no, sorry, I'm not. I'm saying garbage. So one five, I guess we uh, we j we just have one five. Okay. So w one five. So this means one is in a subset and five in the other. Two three, two five. Okay. So one and two are in one same. Okay. I think we have one, two, and six. Yes. So we have. 6 is disconnected from 4, so it's alone. 4 is disconnected from 6, 5. From 6, 5, so it's with 3, I guess. Oh no, wait. 4 is alone? What's the solution then? I think I didn't have the, the optimal value. Objective value. Oops, of uh, linear. Mexicans. Six, okay, yeah, I didn't have, yeah, you're right. So I didn't have, um, I didn't get the proper objective value. I missed uh, the, the optimum uh, when I did my naive uh, computation. So the optimum value is six with one. So one, two are together. And then six, I guess. Uh, one, five. No, because. 4 is not with 5 and 1 is not with 5 so 1, 2 and 4 are together and with this you get 1, 2, 3, 4, 
five, six, yes, okay. So it means um, no, so the solution is one, two, four, and uh, five, three, six. One, three, six. I think. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. Um. Okay, we can leave this on the side. Cool. So I guess we can also add a text here. Again, fairly stupidly just copying my approx. Um. Uh, yes, optimize. Don't forget to optimize before. And then uh, jump. Not objective. So that would be another test. So we don't test the solution here because, um, again, watch out that uh, the, the solution is completely symmetric, meaning if you have one subset S and one subset S bar, you can flip them and you get the, uh, the same objective value, but the um, variables are not the same. The one thing we can also check here is jump.value of uh, X. Ah. One, two, four. So it's one, two, and four together, right? So yeah, long story short, I got bitten by the test in another tutorial uh, last stream because um, one solution was perfectly equivalent to another in terms of objective and so the different solutions could get picked by your solver. All solvers don't work the same, they don't take the same decisions on branching or pivoting for simplex and you can end up with something different. Show value of x, uh, I guess in show value of we just show the same comprehension that we did above. Just show that. Show value of Z. Show value of... No. Show that. Yes. Okay. And yeah, show the objective value we put out here. Yeah, we don't need jump there. That's right. Okay. I think we're good for the linear part, I guess. I'll just take a two minute break. Mm. Oh wow, this herbal tea doesn't cool well. Right, so, um, so if you have questions, don't hesitate on this part. This linear model should be fairly straightforward for the moment. Uh, I just remove the rest of all of this, which we won't need. And then one thing I want to do first is generate the, the notebook and the test out of this, okay? Um, yes. Alright, so we have a new script, and what we'll do is, uh, so 
So I use Julia 1.0. This is important because the notebooks the notebooks depend on it and the tutorials are using Julia 1.0 which is the LTS, the long term supported version. The long term support, yes. Okay. So now this is done. Um, what I do is import jump tutorials. Right, so we have a bunch of warnings here, but uh, this is quote quote not my problem. Well, not our problem here. Uh, it would be nice to fix it, but I, I'm not sure what's happening. So I don't think this. Uh, I check the source code from Weave, and they seem to know what's what's going on. So I'll trust them on that. Uh, so we have jump tutorials, and what we can do is use one of the functions, which is jump tutorials. Uh, weave and we'll weave just um, one file and this is not in optimization concepts but in what's the name again um, uh, modeling modeling and we called it uh, maxcut I think Max maxcut.jl Scripts modeling. Yeah, max cuts. Okay. So usually, I think. Uh, yeah, if it's as usual, I think I'm gonna get an error. It's fine. I'll accept that. So what this uh, WIF file does is creating first a test file, which is the same file but with all the comments removed, all the, um, all the hashtag and quote, single quote uh, comments removed. And then it also creates a notebook and it evaluates this notebook so that you can get a notebook that's already ready to print, uh, well, that's already printing all your outputs for, let's say, teaching or for just showing on the web and so on. It's very practical. I don't think I have any error, which is great. What I can do now is uh, open my notebook, Jupyter Lab. Uh, just change the window for this and I'd open I'm gonna close the others that I have opened and go in notebook modeling and then I have my new notebook my Xcat here so here this is all generated from what we had before ah uh, yeah that's so that that one had not the single quote uh, this one so this means it it you it considered it uh, as a proper code block. Uh, ah, that's a bummer. The LaTeX doesn't seem to have appreciated something. Oh yeah, it does. Okay, fine. So the LaTeX seems fine. Now that I mentioned it, uh, maybe we should not have a double quotes here because this seems to misalign some stuff. Is it better? Yeah, it's slightly better. Uh, I'll modify this as text. Uh, again, uh, if you've watched the other streams, I'm pretty awful with this, but I should not be modifying these files because these are generated. Oh, and now it's worse. I'm completely forgetting what I just did. And, and, and the max line also. Oh, okay. Very good catch. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, so this will go. Yep. Thank you. So we now have a proper render. Oh, and I forgot something here, I think. Uh, oh, yeah, I forgot twice to add new lines. Uh, that's better. Oh, and the in also need Unicode. Oh, and this will need escaping also. Oh, wow. How did I get accepted into university? 
So apart from all these all these things, our model is fine now. So we have our beautifully printed uh, LaTeX model graph taken from this. Okay, it's fine. We don't need the picture. Um, we'll add a stock string here. We have all that. The real question is why people still use LaTeX. I don't know. I, I'm really not fully agreeing with this because uh, I do have a certain love hate for LaTeX, which is more on the love side. Um, I not defined. Okay. Oh, okay. I do have um, this error here. Simple graph not defined. How come simple graph is not defined? It's totally defined. Simple graph. We did load like graph. Uh, what is my recommended alternative to LaTeX? Um, so, I do have a love hate relationship for to with LaTeX, but I definitely recommend it. It's a great, powerful system. Uh, I saw on Twitter recently that people compare LaTeX to sourdough because people just take some LaTeX document to create other LaTeX documents. They never create LaTeX documents from scratch. Maybe this is the confinement speaking and the mix of writing lots of academic documents with <laughs> baking a lot of sourdough bread, I don't know. But I do find the theory interesting. So we do have light graphs uh, loaded. Light graphs not defined. Are you kidding me? Did this is not... Okay, maybe this... It doesn't load everything. Uh, other question in the chat. You are also a fan of Haskell. I'm. I do enjoy Haskell for some things. Uh, I find it very interesting to learn and discover and translate concept in, in concepts into. I don't think I would enjoy using Haskell on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, all right. So now I did load things properly. Uh, this is fine. This is fine. So we should not be erroring anymore. Yeah, yeah, I, I got it. It was a joke. I mean, La LaTeX is a love-hate relationship, but people know that we don't have much better. Yeah, we um, we don't have much better, and I'm not sure from a interface perspective you can get much better except capturing the drawings of mathematics and then translating them into uh, like a machine-generated language that you're never supposed to touch. That could be an idea. Okay, so now everything is working properly. So I'm just gonna take this and copy it back onto my script because... Um, so my script did have some errors. So the first thing to fix is this one here. Uh, I have comments, I comment this out, and then single quotes everywhere. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh. Um. Okay, now that's unfortunate. No, that's fine. Okay, single quote everywhere, and this is not needed anymore. Wait, that was the wrong one, I hope. Mm. Yes, okay, I, yeah, this one is the correct one, the one we kept. Um. One thing we could do here is graph plot our graph, or g plot our graph. Sorry, uh, how did we do it here? I'm gonna leave the Jupyter Lab at the end. 
I'm gonna try to avoid having this loaded at two places. Whoops. Uh, graph plot. Graph plot. Yeah, like that. No, I did not have it open. I don't need that anymore. The maximum cut problem. Yada yada. Um, I should have this on the end of a block. is creating creating uh, unary no um, unit weight matrix here and then uh, computing value for a solution and then so we'll do that and then show and then um, so this will be building the linear optimization model oops I will remain uh, remove this ah no I, I leave it to do here Okay, so now we have a linear optimization model working. Uh, one thing I would like to do is test the, the performance of this, but this might be a bit too costly to do in a notebook, because otherwise what I would like to do is create random graphs and uh, measure the, time, the computation time for, um, for the various sizes of, of a graph, whatever size of a graph means, uh, any metric for random graph generation. Um, but this might be a bit costly, maybe I'll do it on the side. But anyway, the big thing here is we want to compare this with uh, a semi-definite approach, definite formulation. So this here will require quite a bit of uh, explanation, of additional explanation. Um, so let's try to... So this is here a uh, level 3 title, let's say. And this will be a text block. Max... Uh, problem. Also... Um, also be formulated as a quadratic optimization model and I'll just leave it there and leave it for further explanation um, so the intuition behind this is saying that, and bear with me on this, this is fairly, uh, fairly tricky. So the intuition behind this is, if you have, forget about the vector Z for a moment, which is, or the matrix Z, which is associating 0, 1 to each of the edges. What we want this time is, to find uh, edges that are as different, uh, nodes that are as different as possible from each other. So what we want is, um, if we set now xi equal 1, maybe this should be in the, in our draft uh, txt here. 
no that's uh, SDP for semi definite problem if we say that if i is in the set in s x i equal 1 if i in the set minus 1 otherwise so now uh, this is the intuition behind behind this uh, semi definite uh, model is that if x i equal 1 in the set and minus 1 if not in the set then uh, if two vectors are the same they are or the, the product is um, the product is 1 if they are different it's minus 1 so x times so x times xj is giving you whether um, is giving you 1 if your edge between i and j is included and minus 1 otherwise so if you do this times um, how is it now 1 minus this so this is giving you if i and j are identical so in the same set this is giving you 0 if they are in uh, different sets, uh, this means this is giving you minus one. So this is giving you two, um, and then you count it twice because you count it for i, j, and for j i. So this means you would have two times. So if you multiply this by uh, w ij so this would be four times so over ij and ji you will have counted uh, four times uh, the weight if they are different so if i is in s and j is in s bar of the other way around so you divide it by four to normalize this and now this quantity will be wij if um, so yeah, this overall quantity will be W i j if i and j are in different sets and um, zero otherwise. All right, that's it. So that's a quadratic model. This means um, the quadratic model is maximize uh, the sum of these quantities on line 28 subject to xi equals minus 101 and you have to choose um, so I don't even think this is a continuous model I think you need uh, the constraint uh, xi in uh, m minus 11 explicitly so this is still discrete and now this is a mixed integer quadratic model which is even worse it's even harder to solve than uh, mixed integer um, than mixed integer linear problems, which are fairly mature solvers. So why would we want to take a simple model and make it more make it more complex and harder to solve? Well, because uh, the relaxation would be different. So um, let's say we replace this here by. Um, so the sum of this is equivalent to so this is uh, a mat so yes Do you could put all these quantities here in the matrix why i j equal x i j times uh, x i times x j uh, you could also formulate this as yij equals no yeah in a matrix form x uh, times no exponent yeah do I want to write it like this yes yes because we are its vectors behaving as matrices here uh, and 
no, it's the other way. So it's x times uh, query x times uh, x transpose. Okay, I'm in the good sense. Yes. Uh, so this is two equivalent ways of writing a matrix Y. I hope people can follow at least as good as me, otherwise uh, we're all doomed. Um, is everybody alright here? Some Does somebody have a question? Is somebody lost? More than me? Okay, cool, I guess. So, um, from here on, we have we can so we can formulate the vector x as uh, this. One constraint is x i times x i is always equal to one. So this means we need x i i equal x i times x i uh, equal uh, yeah one. Then that's fine. This is a linear constraint over the diagonal of this matrix, so we're all good. So this means we can reformulate the, the optimization model as uh, max uh, the sum over ij of the sum of um, so wij is still the same thing divided by four times one minus uh, y ij then we also need um, y equals so this is here a constraint and um, we also need x equal x in uh, minus one one I think we still need this constraint with this reformulation here so that's the first reformulation. We're maximizing the sum over this, which is a linear quantity, that's fine. Uh, this is hard, and this is hard. Oh, and I think we also need... Uh, I think we need this constraint here. All right. Um, so I hope everybody is fine with that. We maximize this linear quantity subject to this constraint, which is hard. This, and we need that. Okay, so we have now two groups of variables these y's, which are a matrix, and this x, which is uh, our vector. Now, um, this quantity here, maybe, uh, so the people from Smooth Optimizer or some of the other people that are in the chat will stop me if I say anything stupid. But this is a constraint that specifies or requires y to be rank 1 and a uh, positive semi-definite. Okay. Um, and I think requiring this, I'm not even sure if there's a class of problem. Uh, but it's in general hard and this means we can relax this problem in saying so now we're not uh, doing something exact we're relaxing the problem relaxation and the relaxation of this problem is maximizing the sum of ij wij divided by 4 so it's sum over uh, so it's max over y over the y matrix of the sum ij of wij divided by 4 times 1 minus ij okay and uh, subject to we still need this one uh, so the diagonal has to be 1 and instead of this hard constraint here we require y in uh, PSD. So this means y has to be a semi-definite positive matrix. And uh, that would be it.
that's our relaxation. So we are basically relaxing the rank one constraint. And I think we, if we had a rank one constraint here, this will be uh, exact. If you even if you don't have this, I think, yes, yeah, because uh, this can be ignored. Okay, so the relaxation is this one. Um, so the nice thing is this relaxation is uh, way tighter to the integer solution compared to the linear relaxation, which can be arbitrarily bad in that case. You have a simple proof that this solution can be that the solution can be arbitrarily bad. Uh, I'm not going to go into the details here, but yeah, it's um, it's easy to construct a linear uh, solution to the linear relaxation, which. Um, yeah, solution to the linear relaxation, which is constant, I think, with the size of a graph. I think. All right. So uh, now that we have this, uh, let's get back to building the, the actual tutorial. Um, and maybe first thing will be to regenerate my uh, notebook to see if it's gotten better. So I first shut down this. And I'll close the notebook. From there, I'll just regenerate the script with all the fixes I did. Uh, did I fix everything? I hope so. Did I fix the function? Uh, no, I did not. OK, let's save that. And I reweave, uh, reweave this file, and so this will reconvert this notebook. So, so otherwise, I hope otherwise, uh, yeah, I hope everyone's having a good a good Sunday. It's not too rainy here in Scotland. And yeah, temperature is starting to get uh, to get a bit uh, higher, which is nice, definitely. Oh, I think I have I have a tab that just opened on the side, so do I have a graph plot? No. Uh, gplot somewhere. Oh yeah. I don't want gplot html which will open a new um, which will open a new tab in my browser for me. I want the graph to be uh, I want the graph to be its in its own block. Yes, uh, I think Weave is nice because you don't need to commit notebooks anymore. You can just uh, commit some scripts like this and it's fairly simple. I mean the syntax is just add this special character at the beginning. It's a completely valid Julia file so you can run it. But otherwise, you get uh, something way nicer overall. Uh, I'm not sure I do, should I have that. Can I shut down. Uh, is this generating still? So yeah, if you want to try Weave, I think it's a fairly nice system. It works well. Um, it's still maintained and it's even pushed forward for uh, new features, I think. And yeah, overall it's great. I'm really satisfied with it. I didn't use it massively before starting to get onto these uh, these notebooks and tutorials, but yeah, it's it's really easy to to step into. All right. So we'll be there. Semi definite formulation. Yeah, so we'll redo all our all the stuff we did on the quadratic problem. I hope is everyone following? Does do some people not have a clue about what's going on with the optimization formulation? I recently learned about it a bit more, so there's no problem saying you don't get you don't get it. Or there's also no problem saying I don't get it because I might have missed something or said something wrong. Cool, so this is uh, regenerated here. And let's open that. Cool. 
So this is our max cut. Regenerate the oh nice. Look how beautiful it is now. The only thing is we could separate a bit more the fall, but I'm not too picky, so this is fine. And the graph didn't generate. Uh, maybe I created an empty block here that we don't need. Uh, hmm. If I execute that. So this needs to relaunch everything, it might be a bit slow. I thought graph plot will just output my graph directly here. Strange that it doesn't do it. Maybe there was a warning somewhere, I don't know. No. Ah no, okay, it does generate it. I don't know why it didn't do it in the first run. Strange. Anyway, so just above graph plot we have uh, an empty block which is not too nice. G plot, yeah, here. That doesn't need it, um, to print. following example graph is taken, let's do full sentences ok cool, so I I would say the, the notebook is in a, an acceptable state for now, so we'll move on to the to the nasty stuff namely, so continuing on the quadratic formulation quadratic yeah, M a mouthful to say. Um, if solution vector is composed of um, uh, minus one one for um, belonging to the set to the subset or not then I'm not sure I should start a sentence with then uh, it might not be best English style. then uh, product x i x j uh, is minus one if uh, i is i and j are in different subsets and one otherwise this implies um, one minus this quantity oops is is um, zero if i and j are in the same subset and um, two otherwise um, Since um, so, since each pair is counted twice, with i j and uh, j i, uh, 
dividing it to divide it by four. Frack here, yes, maybe. So, frack of that divided by 4 times 1 minus xi xj is 0 if i and j are the same subset, and uh, wij otherwise. Okay, I didn't get lost. Um, if you want to learn more about quadratic programming, you should definitely check Abel's stream. He did one yesterday evening, but too late for me. I mean, yesterday evening at uh, Brazil's time, and one a bit before in the week. So don't hesitate to check Abel's uh, channel to learn about li nonlinear programming a bit more, like real nonlinear programming, um, and. Yeah, uh, especially quadratic programming this week mostly. So all the specific techniques that people use for the proper nonlinear stuff, as in how do you move along your curve and so on. All right, um, the resulting model resulting model is given by. So, uh, we don't have the z anymore, we're just optimizing over x, sum of this frag wij over 4, 1 minus xi xj, cool. Subject to, and then the only constraint we have is xi in minus one one and I think that's it yes uh, and that's for all I in B okay uh, so that's the first model Introducing a matrix variable Y. Oops, and I need to write this as a text block. Introducing a matrix variable Y IJ. xij sorry um, so one thing to note here it's a quadratic model but it's absolutely non-convex uh, it's just uh, because it, well it's product of uh, uh, it's bilinear products of non-diagonal terms only so uh, not great yeah so introducing a matrix variable x y x i j y i j sorry equal x i x j um, we can equivalently we formulate the above uh, quadratic oops oopsie quadratic problem as uh, follows So we're now optimizing over x and y, big Y. So here this would be y i j over 
do we I think we don't need this anymore such that y i j y well i i equal one equals one for i and um so y equal x exponent t nope x x x exponent t okay i think this is all right problem is fully equivalent to the uh, to the initial logic problem uh, and uh, hard to solve we'll not get into complexity details but this is and be hard to solve possible relaxation is to remove the rank one rank one with a dash like this uh, I don't know if we have some of the smooth optimizer people around I let the rank dash one and if it's not the case they'll just shout at me okay so the possible relaxation is to remove the rank one, uh, yielding the following problem. So, and the new problem is, oh, we don't even have x here. I think. Oh yeah, we still have x. And here, um, so we don't have x, we're just optimizing over y now. And well, this the diagonal equal 1 stays, and this is replaced by y in uh, how math cal s n plus. So this would be saying y is semi-definite positive with um, y implying uh, denoting, implying uh, the set of semi-definite positive positive semi-definite matrices. Uh, so one subtlety, people talk of PSD matrices, so PSD here, uh, but when you hear SDP, it's usually about semi-definite programming or semi-definite problems. So we're talking about the optimization problem where one constraint is that the matrix has to be semi-definite positive or positive semi-definite, sorry. So I always switch the sense because of that. All right. Um, so 
So one can such model can be represented, can be uh, created in jump, can be implemented in jump and solved using a solve and optimized uh, solved using an optimizer uh, which supports um, semi definite uh, optimization oh, that's ugly let's maybe conic optimization instead using an underlying solver which supports yeah still a bit ugly but well I guess we can leave it like that for now all right so let's just create the same using the same graph we'll just uh, um, so we won't use GLPK we need a SDP solver now so it would be SDP max cut uh, using our solver. So it would be just Y. And we have jump loaded, right? Yes. PSD. Yes, we have PSD cone. So we can say that a matrix variable is in a PSD cone. Or we can create a constraint directly with SD constraint. Ooh, using the fancy uh, less uh, greater or equal. Um, yeah, SD constraint might be a bit prettier, I think. I don't know. That yeah, that 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 looks fine. We just copy this. Um, this is a tutorial, so I'm completely shameless about. Now um, this is I don't. I think we just create it and say that the variable is in PSD code. Um, variable model uh, y. This will be 1 to n, 1 to n. Uh, maybe this will work like this. So if I create a model, a model, so it's a jump model, and then I create that. No, it doesn't like that. Unknown sense. Okay, it doesn't recognize the character in PSD cone. Oh, that works. Okay, so we can create a variable y that's directly constrained to be in the PSD, so positive semi-definite cone, which is uh, a cone not in the geometric sense, but in the algebraic sense, so if you are not familiar with it. Uh, so yeah, the positive semi-definite matrices form a cone, uh, and it's relatively easy to verify. I'm not gonna do it, but yeah. So now, uh, yeah, what I wanted from a soft back to a software point of view, I wanted a solver that can tackle such semi-definite problem. And we have ECOS, for example. Why not use RS SCS? The two could be good. Uh, I think I was recommended by some uh, German maintainers to use SCS, so we could use SCS. Uh, SCS not optimizer. And I think we're using some special parameter for it. So I'm gonna go to scripts and g and look how they did it. SCS dot Yeah, they usually use verbos to zero. But I guess we can we can cope with verbos not zero for now. Yeah, we'll, I'll just use that. Oh no, that's mine, okay, great. Uh, you know what, let's just leave it verbose for now. We'll just print everything and then remove verbose when we see it's too crazy. So model with this optimizer. 
so the model is called uh, SDP max cut and then the only constraint will be well the only constraint that's not there yet is for i in uh, one one n uh, y of i i is equal to one okay uh, and the objective let's not forget that because that's the biggest part I think so we m let's uh, get this right sum oops no not what I wanted of um, 1 over 4 well just pull the 1 over 4 out I think um, times sum w i j times uh, y times no nope, 1 minus y i j for i in 1 n for j not getting tricked again by the for comprehension with a comma for j in uh, 1 n cool I think we're good here so uh, one thing we could do, if you notice, there's a constant term in the um, in the objective. We could remove it, but the nice thing here is that we keep a complete equivalent between our reformulated problem, or yeah, we keep an equivalent of the objective of what the objective means between the reformulated problem and the initial problem. I didn't want to do that. Okay, so we optimize we optimize it, and I think. Since it's a relaxation, the objective will always be greater than 6. Greater or equal to 6. And then we show it. And there, uh, we will get something that might be fractional and that, that might not be perfect. Okay. Right. Um, did we define the graph here? Yes. What do we? Oh, we didn't import a CS, of course. CS. So this will precompile it. I don't think it's going to be too long. I hope. All right. This looks fine. Creating the model, adding the variable, adding our constraint, which is the the diagonal constraint. objective. We could also write this constraint in a slightly different way. Oh, the objective is exactly 6. That's interesting. Huh. Uh, okay, the objective is 6, but we still get something that does look fractional. Yeah, it's definitely fractional. Uh, so we need to factorize this matrix into xt x I'm not sure how to do this the other way sorry to write the constraint uh, that we had above which is uh, this one will be you can just extract the diagonal of this matrix and this will be this vector and you can just set this like that so add a constraint uh, to the model which is that the diagonal has to be uh, one everywhere, element-wise, on every point here. Just useful tip. Oh no! Why, why did I keep quit that? Sorry about that. Um, yes. Jump. So in the end, we get this. Uh, what I want now is oh boy, my linear algebra is rusty. 
uh, I want to factorize this into x t x. Um, how do I do that? So, um, so we do have something, and what I want now is to factorize this matrix into a form uh, x, x, x transpose. Uh, that's an SVD, isn't it? So my matrix value was that. Maybe equal to that. Okay. Um, uh, SVD. Yes. How do I use this? Full bull false. The computer secret value decomposition of hi there hi computer singular value decomposition is video of a and written as video object usvt vt can be obtained for factorization okay let's try that. Yeah, so the matrix is not completely rank 1. If you can say this is 0, this is a rank 2 matrix, which is not too bad. And now I want to get, um, how do I get something that's the closest possible to uh, x such that um, xx transpose minus the y values is as close as possible to zero. I, my linear algebra is awfully rusty. I should have known what I was getting into when I was uh, starting a stream on on uh, semi-definite optimization. Ah yes, finally someone helping me in the chat. Yes, so this is um, so the SVD object is this first column of U and VT. Thanks a lot for for the help. Uh, so u times diagonal of s one one zero 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 times it. I'm just checking what the values are. All right. S arch dot u times. A 
just one I think Alright, yeah, SRG is a bit of an ugly one. F equal um, so SVD of linear algebra the SVD of uh, my matrix YVs. And then, um, so when you say it's the convention is in the algebra, okay, you mean the the package linear algebra. Thanks, thanks a lot. Uh, right, so f let you multiply this by diagonal, um, or it's just a matrix of zeros. Plus, uh, so uh, middle net. Sorry for the name. Zeros. Um, so U is a six times six. So six six. Oh, like that. Oh, that's so. That's the closest rank one matrix. Okay. All right. By getting by only taking the first singular value. Oh, yo, you mean SVD? V. Okay, SVD this. Single value, yes, there's just one which is the same as the first one. And the others are really closer to zero than what we had before. Okay, cool. Alright. And so it means the f it's the first column of um uh, of U which is here my um my vector, if I'm not mistaken. One, two, and four. And we said the uh, I'm gonna reopen to check one, two, three, one, two, four. Um just well, uh, sorry for that. I didn't close my notebook, it's open somewhere. Yes, yeah. Um just checking the solution that we had before. Oh we didn't regenerate it, did we? Ah yes. One, two, three. Okay. Uh one, two, three is not and four is. So one, two and four. And if we check the solution we have here uh by Randomized rounding on average will get one, two, and four. They're all negative, and the other are positive. So it means on average by randomized rounding, we'll get this three on the side on one side and these three on the other side. So that works. Uh, it's still not that great because well, this one is fairly small. But the positive ones are really positive. That's a, a very good point. Um, yes, I'm looking at the good one. Yes, I am. Uh, so yeah, it's you. Okay. Um, so yeah, this quantity here is. What I was looking for. so that's the rank one matrix. Or if I was taking just the SVD, so the first SVD. It means my. Um, no, the U matrix. Yes, the U matrix was the the one that was interesting, and it's uh, the same U. The first column is the same as what we computed with a rank one matrix. So what we get here is 
minus 0, 1. Min so these three are negative, and they're supposed to be in the same cluster, so 1, 2, and 4. And these three are, well, for this one, really well positive, and they're on the good side. So that's, it's a victory. So we get, if we get randomized, uh, if we randomize the, um, a rounding to minus 1 or plus 1, we would get, on average, a good answer here. So f dot u first column, all right. Um, so yeah, I you should uh, ping me on the repository when we'll do a pull request. I'll definitely add you. Um, uh, um, yeah, I answered to that. Yeah, but yeah, ping me on the on the repository on the pull request, and I'll definitely add you as a as a co-author for this tutorial because I was I would have dug for way more for finding this. Um, recomputing uh, the vector. So it's, let's say it's, uh, no, uh, dollars y approximate, approximate uh, x, x transpose uh, we can compute estimates um, um, looks like the u vector is trying to approximate so our solution vector times uh, sqrt 1 over 5 um, it I wonder if one isn't neutral in this I mean if having one on one side or on the other side is not equivalent because if that's the case, it would make sense for uh, the value of the first vertex to be indifferent to being 1 or minus 1. So we'll check that after. By uh, random rounding, randomized rounding, and I think here uh, to do add paper. Because there's, I mean, this has been investigated a long time ago, and there's a reference paper for this from the 90s. Um, yes, and I just get f equals vd of y uh, of value of y, and. Um, hat yeah I'm not sure I like writing it like this but well x hat equals um, um, so f dot u so uh, all the rows first column and how do we normalize this? Uh, yeah, I think there's a geometric reason for uh, for this not being. If I reoptimize, I don't know. Yeah, I wonder if I reoptimize it, how if it. Yeah, I think it will fall to the same solution. It's a convex problem. Um, so x has equal f. This is a normalized, and then uh, x hat equal map of this to x v for value maybe. Um, uh, 
b smaller or equal to zero no, greater or equal to zero um, this so this is uh, false or true which is equivalent to zero one times two minus one so this is resetting everything to minus one one uh, but we could also la leave it to times 1 to get something that's 0 or 1. Yep, welcome. It was nice to have you. Um, Alright, so we have our x hat and we'll show uh, the common solution of x hat and uh, jump that value of the x of the linear problem. Um, linear. No. So we don't need that. So um, I zip them together and collect that thing. Collect of zip of x linear and x hat. All right. Uh, let's reload everything. First, use the first model, so load the graph that we don't need. Optimize the linear version of it. Yeah, we don't need to show everything. What time is it? Oh yeah, we've been at it for uh, for some hours now. So that's the linear version of it. And then what the linear integer version of it? And then uh, this one. Yeah, I do import SCS. Yeah, we can remove a constant reference because we're not needing it here. Yeah, plus this is not constant reference, this is actually a variable that's returned. So it's not optimizing it. I think it would be worth it to still have a plot of the... Um, have a plot of the time taken by the relaxation, by the semi-definite one, time taken by the mixed integer linear version, and then the the plot of uh, the accuracy gap if we have if we have a mistake okay oh yeah and bad luck we get yeah the solution are complementary so when it's one on one it's zero on the other and so on uh, I'll also maybe round it. Uh, so there's the first one that needs round to int just for printing the same values, well, the same style of values. Did I forget the parentheses? Yes, absolutely. No. Int. Oh, no. Round int here. That's why. Type no method ground integer. Oh, no, yes, I need to broadcast that. So this broadcast, for those who are not familiar with Julia, is a function applied element-wise to a collection, usually to an array. OK, and we get a good solution in the sense that we get exactly the symmetric thing. So if we get, if we do 
one minus again I apply this minus to the whole x hat and here we good well that's wonderful um, yeah I, I don't think we're gonna get um, so uh, one test we could add here is either the um, either the diff the sum of the difference will be zero or it would be the number of vertices so that would be a good test here from minus so sum sum of well we'll sum the absolute function so yeah maybe we'll just do a norm uh, linear algebra dot norm norm one is norm one exported nope but we'll still use just norm one directly linear algebra dot norm one of this is equal zero or uh, or equals n no um oh yep still but I didn't create the rounding problem here. Uh, nope, not that. So round broadcasted with uh, first argument being the type. I want to broadcast around to integer of this vector. And the same thing here, round broadcasted integer comma and linear. And that's not needed. extra token where is it at the end of expression huh. here ah right there was one left over there perfect yes and that's this one wait oh I completely forgot one here so if I run the two things here no collect zip ah same thing with round I'll never learn and this one's not needed okay yeah, perfect finally we're getting somewhere uh, the paper for randomized rounding do I have it around I took a look at it a bit earlier so I should have it somewhere. Uh, Germans and Williamson, 1995, or Delorme and Pol Poliak, yes, 93. Uh, Laplace and eigenvalues and the maximum cut problem. Yeah, that's for introducing a bound on the problem. Mm, I think. It it might be the 95. I'm not sure which one to uh, which one to give. The others are the others seem to be mostly for um, uh, specific graphs. Okay. Um, so. Is everyone doing it right? I'm not. Did I confuse someone? Are you laughing for the SVD part? I hope not. Not too much. Uh, I think we're starting to get good here. Um, I just regenerate everything. Yeah. Did I? Did I console it? I just weave the file. 
gem tutorials. We've no, not not all. I want to weave on the. Weird. Why do I have? No, that's in modeling and um, max cuts. So again, I'm gonna regenerate my file from this, my test file and my notebook. And in the meantime, I can just execute my file, which is a standard GUI file, which means I can just include it here, for example. Um, uh, so I'm including my scripts. Script, uh, it will be in modeling uh, max cut. And so the, that's the one of the biggest advantages of having a weave system is you can just run your file like that, not bother too much. Um, yeah, and you don't need to um, you don't need to worry about having a file on the side that's synchronized with the rest of, let's say, a notebook or things like this. You really have your your code and the documentation is in sync because it's in the code directly and just everything gets generated nicely. Alright, in the meantime, um, yes, yes, oh, I didn't import, oh, of course, I imported it but in my REPL only. Yes, yes, but I didn't import it there. In the script, I mean. So this should work all nicely here. Test passed, okay. So we didn't get any error, that's a good thing, and we have all our tests passing. So I do agree now that I see it that uh, SES is a bit verbose. Although it's nice to see the result and understand what's going on, I will uh, set it just like the others, which is optimizer with attributes, optimizer with verbose at zero. Uh, and that's here. Yes, here. Okay. Um, so yeah, with this, if I rerun the script, it will be the same thing with less output. Yes, perfect. Maybe we don't need to show the value y. Yes, that. Yeah, maybe yeah, we can remove this one. Okay, we seem to be good here. Uh, I think I will stop the stream there. Uh, it's been quite long already, uh, two hours and a half. Uh, if you have questions, just don't hesitate in the last minutes in the chat. Uh, if you want to chat about something specifically. Uh, maybe maybe we should add a bit more uh, graphical example, as in show what's happening in the graph. Maybe color the graph at the end. Um, yeah, that could be an idea. Yeah, I think I will I will do that now. Just add a quick function in the graph for. Yeah. Now that I have the idea, I can't get it out of my mind. So um, after. So after we've optimized here, represent the solution. Representing a solution. 
or visualizing a solution. So graph plot, um, and we use graph color. I think for this we might need a colorant. Uh, oh no, no! Thank you for all the help on the on the SVD part. That was that would have been awful. Um, so I think I just pull uh, the um, <coughs> documentation from LightGraph. Uh, namely from graph plot and so what do we have here I want to have a specific color for my uh, yeah that's nice I want to have specific colors for my nodes depending on the, the node value node field C okay that looks like what I'm wanting what I'm uh, looking for. Uh, so membership is here our. F so we will need something from color. Did I close the window already? No. Color of graph. So I think we need using graph plots. Where is this color from? Colors.jl. Yes. Uh, colors and that will be colorant str uh, for those who don't know what this is this is a um, what's the name again a string macro and this allows you to transform a string into something else or to construct something else from a string so if you do something like this and you construct it with this special thing uh, in front of it this will call the macro s str over your string high so it's really practical to have sometimes just like things like this Defi defining uh, colors directly. Um, so um, membership equal. So this will be um, round int um, x i plus one for x i in. No, the 4 is after, for xi in, that would be x linear. Okay. Uh, and this will be node color. Uh, all nodes colors round, and this will be node color of this, which will be either one or two and the syntax is not field C something um, not fill yeah not field C we should really change this keyword I don't find it that clear but well it's not it's it's a convention So ah yes, I need to I need to plot HTML when I'm in here. So what does it look like? I hope it works. Yes, it does. Oh, wonderful! Uh, so that's exactly what we wanted. Visualizing what's happening. Um, in the graph directly. Cool. Mm -hmm. Let's get back here. So this works, uh, which means we'll move this 
to the top. And we'll add that um, here. Um, and we add that to uh, that was the x hat and that was um, x hat it's x i plus one for x i in x hat Okay, so I think that's it. Now we have a uh, notebook well working. Cool. Um, we'll add just one last thing promised. Um, add so representing the SDP solution. The SDP approximated solution. That would be a title. Okay, yeah. Now we can finish. Uh, thank you all for joining. And yeah, if you have questions, reach out on Twitter, in the chat, or anything else. Uh, yeah, in on the Slack, on Discord, or whatever you want. Or on the repo directly. If you want to contribute, feel free. It's not my repo. It belongs to the Jump organization. But I'm b I've been uh, playing a bit with it in the last week or so. All right. See you all and yeah, wash your hands.